Hey everyone, this is just an introductory video where we're going to look at a voltage supply, an LED, and a resistor. So first we're going to measure how many ohms our resistor is. Um, because it's a low number of ohms, it's okay if you're holding it. Typically if it's a high ohms, like mega ohms, you shouldn't hold it because your body also has resistance. Okay, so our resistor is 68 ohms, and resistors can go in either direction. So our power supply connects to our amp meter which goes into our resistor which goes into the anode of the LED and then into the black wire which connects back to the power supply's negative terminal. So now I'm going to slowly turn the voltage up and we're at 1.3, 1.5 volts, 1.6 volts. We're starting to see 1 milliamp on the other meter. 1.8 volts. We're at 2 milliamps. 2 volts. We're at about 4 milliamps. 2.1 volts, we're at 5, 2.2, we're at 6, 2.6, we're at 12, 2.9, we're at 14, 3 volts, the flipper is 3.3, 3. 3. so now we're at 3.3, and we're reading about 20 milliamps, which is the maximum amount of current you're allowed to flow through the flipper safely without causing damage to the flipper device itself. So with this LED, our resistor needs to be 68 ohms at 3.3 volts to stay under 20 milliamps. This is due to the voltage drop across the LED. In reality, I'd probably use a resistance of about 150 ohms just to be on the safe side. The flipper has a built-in 51 ohm resistor, so we could use a 100 ohm external resistor. So now we have the power supply connecting to the resistor which is connecting to the cathode, which is the short wire of our LED. And then the anode is connected to the positive of our supply. And you can see the light lights up. Now we're going to reverse the orientation so that the anode connects to the negative and the cathode goes to the positive. And you'll see the light doesn't turn on. Now on another LED, we'll connect the long wire, which is the anode, to the negative, and the short wire, cathode, to the positive. Again, the light doesn't turn on. Flipping it around so that now the cathode is to the negative and the anode is to the positive, you can see the light works properly. Now we'll connect one anode and one cathode to the negative. And then we'll connect one anode and one cathode to the positive, being careful not to short the two wires together. Notice how only one of the lights glow, the one with the cathode connected to the negative. Now let's swap the wires around. Remember, the colors of the wire don't matter. So now the red wire is going to our negative and the black wire is going to our positive. Notice how the lights switched, which one is glowing. Switching it back again. And we're back to the other way. In this circuit, we have our voltage supply going into our amp meter and then going into the LED. Notice there's no resistor in this circuit, which is a bad idea. Okay, I'm gonna turn up the voltage I'm at 1.7 and we're at 2 milliamps. I'm at 1.8, we're at 4.5. I'm at 1.9, we're at 6 milliamps. I'm at 2 volts and we're already at 10 milliamps. 2.2 volts and we're at the maximum the flipper can handle already 20 milliamps. I'm using the coarse voltage adjustment now. So we're at 2.4 volts, we're at 35 milliamps. 2.5, we're at 40. 2.6, we're at 50 already. 2.8, we're at 60, 70 at 3 volts. 3.3, we're at 100 at 3.5. Continue moving up, 3.7. As I turn up the voltage a little bit more, we're at 5 volts and 200 milliamps, which is one watt of power across the LED. OK, 
Okay, we're continuing to increase. 5.3, 5.4, 5.6, 5.9, 6.0. We're moving my current throttle. And now we're at 7.8.9 point smoke. And once more, a little bit slower this time on the video replay. Well, the joke I always heard was electronics run on smoke. And once you let the smoke out, they don't work anymore. So there we have it. The LED is burned out. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave any comments or questions below.